What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Chris, man. We are here at the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. Uh, it is March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, trust me when I tell you, I definitely got my green on. Um, <laughs> and uh, representing this day, I got a special uh, guest coming on. Her name is Meredith Michaels. Uh, you might have seen her at uh, Sarah's in North Court, uh, Florida. Uh, and now she is working with the Braves. She's also a part of the Jones and Company 107.9 radio show Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. So we're going to talk to her about her why into media, sports, uh, also her choice of school. Um, we're going to talk to her about some fun questions. We're going to get to know how she deals with things. Um, and we're also going to just have a really good conversation from one reporter uh, to somebody who's in radio, somebody who I also have aspirations of being in radio as well. So definitely looking forward to uh, having her on and being able to talk to her. So she will be on with us in a few moments. Looking forward to that, no doubt. Um, oh, and without any further ado, I definitely bring to you the wonderful Meredith Michael. Meredith, good morning. How are we doing? Hey, how are you? I'm doing right, bye, good. Good. Sorry about the reschedule. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to take my headphones out. Can you still hear me? Oh, I hear you great. I hear All right, you great. Good. You look absolutely terrific. Well, no thank you. It. You're so kind. I appreciate that. No, How are no, you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm chilling over here, uh, literally in Minnesota. Uh, it's starting to heat up over here, which is pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Um, I want to ask you, though. Uh, well, yeah. first, I want to say thank you for sure. coming on to the podcast. Sure. I really do appreciate that. And obviously, yes, I know no worries about the reschedule. Obviously, I want to ask you about your health. Uh, because that was part of the reason why, but also yeah. asked about your family and uh, get the pandemic and how you guys are doing. Sure. Thank you so much. So yeah, I, um, I'm i feeling great. Other than allergies, it's pollen season here in Florida. Everything is coated in yellow. And the older I get, the the more I get allergies. I never had them until I was in my 30s and now they kick my butt. Um, so thank you for that. Um, COVID only lasted for me about four or five days. It was super, it was, um, I was very lucky. I think I got the Omicron or whatever the the, the lesser mm -hmm. one was. Right. And family's good, husband's good, parents are good. Nobody else got it but me that time. So I'm good, but how did you, so you're in Minnesota, you went to Kennesaw State. How did that connection happen? Oh, no problem. I'll definitely tell you that. So basically, you know, I graduated with a journalism degree from Kennesaw State. And my thing was, I, I was already on the market as far as connecting with people and trying to apply for jobs. I wanted to be in the sports business. And at the time, uh, I was working full time in Atlanta doing the lottery overnight. So I just wanted to transition careers and be able to do that. And um, I got five offers from different people who wanted me to be a sports reporter in their town. So two of them was from Indiana, uh, but they were very low pay in Indiana. So they were around, I would, I'll, I'll tell you, they were around $21,500 a year. Um, and I just said, absolutely not. I didn't even entertain that thought. And then I got an offer from uh, Idaho, which was a little better with money, but still, still very low. And I understood that it was going to be low, but at the same time, you, you don't want to be eating top ramen every night. No, oh, right. no. You want to eat real good meals, uh, at least meals that you can cook, stuff like that. <laughs> so uh, Missouri was next, and their offer bumped up even more. And then Minnesota's offer was really good. So I had to decide between those two, and I decided on Minnesota when they uh, brought me out on a visit. Um, and they kind of took care of me there. And then I came out here and I was like, okay, let me come to this, uh, Minnesota. It's a small town. Don't get me wrong. I love the small town vibe. I love how nice the people are here. Uh, the town is only 11,000. So it's oh, very wow. small. Yeah, it's very small. However, it's great to write stories. It's great to write profile pieces on different athletes, different people in the community. Uh, a lot of people in the community have already really taken to some of the stories that I've written. And photos that I've had. So 
I'm just loving my time here so far and just, you know, soaking it all up. That is amazing. And at least in the state, you have some uh, sports teams that have had some success. Idaho, other than maybe basketball or yeah. college, I don't know, maybe high school, but professionally, professional uh, level, at least Minnesota's got some things going on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I'm I'm about two hours from Minneapolis, the actual okay. city. So it's not terribly bad. So I can actually go there, yeah. be able to watch some pro stuff, um, possibly do some freelance work. Because uh, right now I cover high school and I cover a university here within our okay. town. Okay. So I do college and uh, high school. So it's pretty cool. I, I like that. You know what? I was a college softball coach at a high level junior college. It was State College of Florida for eight years. I was the head coach. And wow. one thing I know about smaller towns and their schools is I'm sure for you, when you write stuff, those parents share it the kids share it. They get yes. super hype when they're covered because they're like, they f often you feel left out. Like I would hate to be a high school in like Gainesville, Florida or somewhere where right. like with the Gators, they're like, we don't care about that little high school, you know, I'm assuming. <laughs> so I bet you, you get shared and liked a lot when you do uh, cover those teams. So good for Absolutely, you. Absolutely, Meredith. Absolutely. You, not, you hit it on the head. Uh, that's the, one of the main reasons why I want to come here. Yep. is to be able to impact the community and tell stories that maybe people don't look at. Mm -hmm. uh, and also not just, you know, cover games, you know, also do my podcast here. I just had a local guy who was a coach for uh, over 28 years um, on my podcast. And already uh, 4,500 people have watched it, which is crazy. So and that hey. just happened Sunday. That just happened Sunday. So, Jeez. Yeah. So it's been really, really impactful, uh, you know, just trying to be able to do podcasts stories that's why it's a no-brainer to have you on because i know you do jones and company 107.9 monday through friday yeah uh, and i also know that you work with my girl now emily kinzer who i hey. know <laughs> who i know i um, love emily and listen when i had her on uh had her on here she said she loves you and you will be great to talk to so um nice. uh, yeah absolutely so i had her on too and we've become very good friends now, kind of talking back and forth as well. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited. And with that, oh. I want to segue because yeah. I want to ask you about your aspirations and maybe inspiration that you might have had growing up and okay. what gravitated you towards a career in media. Okay. So my whole life, I don't ever remember learning how to play softball. It's something I've always done. Like I can't remember being taught to throw. I've just always played. And it was a really great way for my dad and I to be together. I had a really great dad. He passed, it's been 11 years, but um, growing up with that father figure who also played sports, I would tag along and watch his slow pitch games. He coached my, my softball teams. So the whole sports route, when I first entered the workforce, I worked at IMG Academies, the sports academy in Bradenton, yeah. and then transitioned over to the college where I got to coach where I played before. So it was really neat in that aspect. So I think inspiration, my whole family is sports nuts. My grandmother still screams at the TV for Ohio State <laughs> football games. I mean, she is like losing it over Ohio State and even the Buccaneers. So sports is really deep in my family's DNA. But I would say inspiration wise would be my dad on the sports side. And in the media side, I have a major love for music. So I would listen to the radio all the time. And my mom told me recently when I got on air five, four years ago, yeah. She's like, well, your, your dream came true. You're on the radio. And I was like, what? She said, yeah, when you were a kid, you used to always say you wanted to be on the radio. So I was like, that is oh. insane. Isn't that weird? I don't remember that. Right. But the path I took when I went to South Carolina Aiken for my bachelor's, I chose communications because I thought I was going to go in there and be a business major. I wanted to get into sports uh, business management, like do something in the sports field. And they looked at my scores and gave me my schedule and they were like, no, you're not in the business school. You can go to communication. So I was like, hmm, what does that mean? Right, but right. I, once I got into communications, I was getting A's. Where before I would work my butt off to get B's. I would get A's, but I had to, I mean, I had to grind to pass and do well. Right. Once I got into communications, it was like natural to me. So for me, it's not that communications was easy. I just feel like 
being a middle child, maybe my communication style, I know how to bring people together, not to yeah. alienate people. It's like that. And I care about someone when I'm talking to you, I care about you. I'm not like looking at other people in the room. You know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely. I just feel like interpersonal skills, then you learn about mass. And then in some of my mass comm communication, communications classes, I was like, wow, I love this. I love graphic design. I love at that time, internet was kind of new. It was like 2002. So it was like blogs were coming out and everyone was getting like dot com stuff. So it was like, oh my God, this is, this feels good. So I veered from communications, went into sports. Then I ended up in communications, which led me to a job with the Braves on the side. So it's kind yeah. of cool how those things weave. So mm -hmm. that's the long answer to inspirations, aspirations. I guess aspirations would be to continue to climb and reach more people in radio. Absolutely. Growing social though, as you know, can be very hard. There's so much of it out there to break through the noise. It really takes talent, consistency and something different. And that's freaking hard. It's hard to find an original idea. Whenever we have an idea on the show, we Google it to see if anyone's done it. And mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, you're like, oh, someone already did that song. You right, know what I mean? Right. Or right. so, uh, it's just, I just want to continue to grow. And I always strive to be the best at whatever I do. So if that means you win an award or win the ball game or whatever, I'm pretty competitive. So we'll see. Hey, I love that. I love what that. About, what about you? What's your dream job? Is it like with a pro team or a bigger city or what's your, what's your dream? Uh, to, to be a triple threat. I would love to be a sports reporter. Uh, on, I'd love to be on Capsule TV, you know, time as well, sometime. But I also would love to just continue going to the bigger parks, the bigger games, you know, yeah. cover the pros, um, and just continue writing those sports, continue uh, connecting with people and athletes, getting sources, and just writing stories, right? So I just want to be, and I want to do radio. I would love really? to do radio at some point um, and just be Aww. able to talk radio and, and do that so triple threat that's something that i would love to do um obviously a goal of mine um eventually would probably be covering the super bowl i'd love to take my dad to the super bowl that'd be great wow. he's a huge nfl fan so okay i'd love to do that for sure um where is your dad he's in new york okay so yeah. is new york your home base or is that where your dad is no that's where my dad is i, okay. I i'm i was all over so i was born in chicago okay i was raised in san diego and then I also lived in Atlanta. So, uh, so yeah, I've been around, no doubt. Okay, so not to get sidetracked, and I'm sure you have a time limit because your time's valuable too, but with all those big cities, what are your teams in the different professional oh. sports? Like you've probably, are you all over the map? Uh, no, not really. Uh, okay. Basketball is Lakers, uh, okay. for sure. Um, baseball is Padres and Cubs. Okay. Um, football, that makes sense. Yeah, right. It makes sense, right? Football is Chargers. Okay. Um, hockey is the Kings and the Blackhawks. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. So LA, Chicago, sprinkle in some, you know, San Diego, San uh, Padres, but okay. I see. I see. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, okay. So I looked up online and I was trying to do my research here. And I guess I got it wrong because you talked about South Carolina because I thought you went to Duquesne University. Okay, so I have my master's in sports leadership from Duquesne, but okay, I had you. a softball scholarship in Aiken um, after it was MCC, mm -hmm. then Aiken, then I had my master's, but I didn't play at Duquesne. I didn't even, it was online too. So, okay, yeah, so okay. Those are my good, right. that's, that's why you did your research, correct? I did. And, you, and I have two last names because on air you have one usually and so i'm sure you might not have been able to find some stuff i saw that i did notice that as well i did and to throw a wrench in there so meredith headings my maiden name uh then i joined the morning show meredith michaels and then right. a year and a half into that i got married so i there's a third last name that i don't even introduce to the mix yet because i don't want to confuse everybody right no i totally i totally understand that i want to know were there any other schools that could have persuaded you from going to uh, uh, South Carolina? Hey. Oh, I, I hope my Pacer brothers and sisters don't get mad at me uh, because I loved my time in Aiken. But I grew up loving Ohio State. Yeah. And 
so that would have been the dream. I think my dad's head would have exploded uh, if I went to Ohio State. So yeah, I think any of the bigger schools, but again, I didn't have the test scores. And back then we didn't have YouTube and things to get your highlight reels out or to send stuff. You had to mail, like I had to mail packets with Xerox copies of my <laughs> like news clippings, you know what I right, mean? So right. I think you had to be really, really good back then to get seen. And, um, but I, I'm happy with the choice, but I would say Ohio State, I would have, I mean, it would have been a no brainer. I would have played for free if they would have let me, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, the, we're talking about the horseshoe. So no, yeah. no question about that, <laughs> right. yeah, absolutely. I've been there once for a game, because I had a friend that went to Ohio State and that was just bananas there. And I was like, it, man, this is a it's nice a vibe. religion. It's a religion in Columbus. So mm -hmm. uh, yes. Um, let me ask you some favorite things. Okay? okay. And I'm gonna ask you some favorite questions, Matt. If you can give me the 411 off the rip based upon these questions. Got it. Here we go. Favorite music genre. Rap. Okay. Now older, if, older oh. rap. Okay. 90s, 2000s, even 2010s. Some of this, some, look, I still like rock to the new stuff. I like to hear what's out there, but right. my heart is when I was 90s and 2000s. No, I, I feel it. I feel it. Biggie, I, I feel. Biggie, Eminem, Tupac, those are, those are my boys. Outcast. Okay. So. Mm, I like that. You got some yeah. nice ones. I like that. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, Favorite movie, John? Comedies. Comedies, mafia. I would say comedies and then like mob stuff. I like mob stuff. Okay, I like that. I do. Okay, I, I feel that. Favorite meal you like to cook? I'm not a very good cook. My husband does a lot of the cooking, but I cook this one Indian dish that I love. It's chicken pumpkin curry, and it is that's my that's my go to. You know what? I So out of those three words, I love the chicken. I love the pumpkin. I don't know much about the curry, though. But okay. the chicken and the pumpkin sound real good. So I'm, okay. in, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'm intrigued by that. Yep, on sure. some jasmine rice. Mm, that sounds yeah. delicious. Man, it really okay, is. Like uh, two more to favorite. Favorite place you ever traveled to? <sighs> That's hard. Oh, um... Oh, geez, it was my honeymoon. What's wrong with my brain? Oh, it's in Utah where oh. they do the Sundance Film Festival. What is wrong with me? I just went there. Park City. Park City. Okay. Park City. It was beautiful. We saw snow. It's a quaint town. I would say Park City. Wow. Uh, you know what? This, that is a first on the Work Hard, Play Hard podcast. Never heard of a honeymoon in, in Utah, but that yes. is what's up. I like we that. Did. Well, we did Utah, so it was quiet, and then we hit Vegas before we went home. Oh, I know y'all had a blast there. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I, know yes. it. I know it. Okay, yes. I like that. <laughs> Favorite alcoholic drink? Champagne. Mm. I okay. love bubbles, bubble, bubble, bubbles. Fun fact here, Meredith, never had champagne. Wait, what? Yeah, never, okay. never had champagne. You know, I've been a, a beer, a liquor guy, but okay. mm -hmm, never had champagne. So here's a tip. If you're going to ever start it, I would get horrendous headaches at first, but I pushed through. <laughs> okay. Mm, I like that. I, I like the fact you get headaches. I do. Yeah. Because that means it must be good. It must be yes. very good. Okay. It's so good. But I do love vodkas and my husband likes whiskeys. What's your drink of choice? Oh, definitely um, Hennessy, uh, vodka, uh, tequila. Uh, okay. Do you do any on the rocks or do you make, do you make stuff with them? Oh, uh, well, Hennessy, I like to do Coke with. Um, tequila, I'm on the rocks, no doubt. Okay. Uh, nice. My vodka, I, I'm, I'm kind of a fruity person when it comes to vodka. I like my cranberry and vodka. So, yeah, Beautiful. That's pretty good. Mm, I and love now it. I'm thirsty. Hey, right? That sounds damn good, don't it? I'm <laughs> it telling does. you. It's a little it does. Bit. Um, I want to ask you about uh, mental health and work life balance. Okay. Yes. And the reason why I want to ask you is because it's become so prevalent in our society now. People are talking about it um, and people are being really affected by it. And it wasn't like that back in the day. So now with you being married, you have a radio show early in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if you have a, a 
my mom, if you have children or not, but if you do, then you, I understand. Um, mm -hmm. You have all these responsibilities, including mm -hmm. friends. You seem like an outgoing person. I look at your Instagram videos. I don't yeah. see a video where you're not smiling or doing something. So, <laughs> you know, we're pretty, I mean, we have a lot of fun. Right. Yeah. So, and that's great. That's awesome. But you also need some merit of time, too, to yourself. So how do you balance your work life, social life, but also maintain good mental health? So right now, okay, how do I put this? I never knew I had anxiety and I never knew that I had bouts of depression right. until the last four or five years, even before COVID. So I think the pandemic may have kicked it up a notch, but I didn't realize it until when I stopped playing or coaching softball, my activity level went down and I never realized how much running and hitting and throwing and pitching and playing softball burned up some of that anxiety. When I got into sales at iHeartRadio before the morning show, and then I continued sales for the first three years on the morning show. So I was working like 15 hour days. Right. I did hit a breaking point where I like literally snapped crying on a zoom meeting with like our president of the region like wow. i'm losing it i have to get out of sales but sales was where most of my income was so for me life my work life balance was because i proved myself those first three years and grinded and was like burning the candle at both ends and the middle they did make me full-time on air with a salary that was enough to live on right. so that helped my work life balance but I still wasn't doing the physical activity to burn up some of that stress. So now what I, I've noticed is I, I did end up going on some prescriptions to just level out that. And a couple of years ago, it dawned on me, I'm not exercising. I'm exercising like a fourth of what I used to do on just a regular basis because of being a coach. So for me, my work-life balance is I have to turn off everything digital everything no phone like if i'm if i'm walking i have my phone for music only i'm not like scrolling because i see people walking and still on their phone i'm like you're yeah. outside put right. the phone down unless you're right. answering you know but anything a text and call can wait so for me i have to completely unplug and i'm a very 100 mile an hour or zero miles an hour person so okay. if i have a really busy week i will literally sit in my living room for two full days and not I don't even go to the grocery store. So I'm I'm kind of a burn and crash kind right. of person. Right. Um, so I think for me, um, I did some online counseling apps that were really helpful just to get some things off my chest, but work-life balance is so essential. And I think just knowing that it's okay to slow down, it's okay to not do everything on your to-do list every day because type A personality, it would drive me nuts. And then I should have just done the work because now I'm so worked up at, about not doing that one thing. I can't sleep. Right. So for me, it's drawing that line every day. Maybe some days my line is at 3 p.m. Maybe some days it's at seven. Like last night I was at the Braves till seven. Okay. Well, when I got home, phone was on the charger, shower and just eat dinner and veg out. So for me, it's drawing that line, setting up boundaries and knowing some of my older bosses, some people I work with maybe don't quite get the fact that you don't need to work 24 seven. Right. And so I feel like I worry about the opinion of other people in the workforce thinking I'm not working as hard as them, but you have right. to let that stuff go. So as long as I can make those good boundaries i think that's how i'm handling it now and i force myself to walk or do some kind of i call it like sweat session something every day otherwise i start to churn up here so that's no, I, that's a terrific answer Mary. So i really do i really do appreciate that answer appreciate your openness as well about the counseling and, and the therapy that you might have gotten talking to people about it uh, it's just something that you know it needs to be asked that's yeah. how people in this industry do, you know, yeah. because different people deal with this different, right? So I know for me, uh, going to the Y here, it's such mm -hmm. a small town, so we don't have a lot of stuff here, but going to the YMCA, working out, uh, playing pickleball, which is a new sport that I picked up. It's my uh, favorite. You yeah. play pickleball? Yeah, I do. I'm obsessed. I love pickleball. Love it. I love it too. I did a story on it, wrote a story on it out here. Uh, with the people at the YMCA and I do that to kind of clear my mind. Yes. Uh, because 
my mental health was being affected by the fact of just um, friends in general that work in the business side, the eight to four, nine to five, ten to sixes, didn't understand what a journalistic side uh, schedule is. They just don't. It's very tough for them to understand. And some of them is tough to even compromise yeah. because, you know, they're asking you to go out all the time, turn up, and mind you, Meredith, this podcast is called Work Hard, Play Harder for a reason because <laughs> that's right. what I like to do. However, I got responsibilities and I have boundaries I have to set and deadlines I have to meet. And a couple of friends I lost that was really close to me because they just, they got tired of asking me to come out because of course, yeah. when you make time, I go by the motto of my lifestyle of people will make time for people that they want to be around. And I always have lived my life like that. Um, and if people don't make that time, it's not a bad thing. It's just something that you just can't be in the inner circle. It's okay. Yeah. Right. I can still love you from afar. I can still say hello to you from afar, but it was also affecting my mental health because I'm also a single bachelor and I'm also three, three plus decades. Uh, I've been on this world and I'm like, I'm a single bachelor and I work two to 11. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't take people out and go out to dinner. It's hard. I can't do this unless we're meeting up for breakfast. But who wants to right. meet up for breakfast all the day? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, right. my mental health is just getting affected. Like, am I I'm going to be able to find somebody? Am yeah. I going to be able to do that? So is this one of those things where I work out, I write poetry? Um, oh, that's a great outlet. Okay. Yeah, I love love poetry, love writing that. Um, and then also, I love connecting with people and listening to people's stories. Because um, some of the things that people say on this platform, and even talking to different people in the world, I try to implement in my life. So. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. That's. Um, I'm sorry that you have gone through that. I can empathize with that when you have um, odd hours or you're just, you're a little more focused maybe than some of the people in your same age bracket. Um, I totally understand that. I can remember, I can't, cause I have, so I can't softball, I can't softball. So then people stopped inviting because they're tired of getting no's, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel that. And then when you do get that one day off, do you wanna go to that birthday party or exactly. do you wanna sit down for a minute? Yeah. And that's the hard part is, is finding what matter but to your point maybe you go to the birthday party but you stay for two hours not eight and get lit like you know so that's maybe that's the compromise there but i'm sorry you were going through that when were you in minnesota during the whole pandemic shutdown too no okay. i was in atlanta i was in atlanta okay. georgia uh for that and yeah i had i've heard friends there too and i'm, I'm totally fine yeah. when, when the pandemic hit obviously you know, it was very devastating, losing a lot of people, a lot of lives, but just the condition, the condition of staying in the house and trying to be safe as possible. Okay, I got that. You yeah. know, Atlanta was a little different than everybody else. Because Atlanta okay. lifted their stuff very early in the pandemic. Florida, Florida too. Did, as you know. Florida so, was like, YOLO. Right. <laughs> they right. did not care. Yeah, they yeah. Did not. So yeah. me, I'm wearing a mask where I see like 25 other people not. So it's like, you know, I get it. So for me, it just really affected me because I'm such a friendly person. I'm a people person and I love being around people, making them smile, making them laugh, making them feel good. Uh, Cause I relate to you. I'm also a middle child. I'm three or four. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I totally get wow. bringing people together, understanding older, but understanding my younger brother as well. You know, I just, I totally get that. So that's yeah. where I was like, okay, this is some stuff I need to do to be able to kind of free my mind and, and not really think about you know, people not asking me to hang out no more, not thinking about, well, man, am I ever going to find that one person that maybe has a relatable schedule? Because sports is nighttime, right? You know it. Braves play at night. And you've mm -hmm. got to find that special someone that knows, that can understand your schedule and relate to you. And you also yeah. compromise and compromise with you and vice versa. So it's, it's just difficult when you break into the uh, industry. So. And to your point, am I ever going to find somebody when I was – still a college softball coach and had a full-time job at the college yeah. I had a joke I would tell people unless an umpire or a coach walks into my life who am I going to you know find because I'm always on the field I'm always at the school so right. I totally understand that for me it was a small part of why I walked away from it but for you you love what you're doing so I, I, I wonder if maybe the right person will just come into your life 
whether it's this city or another one that understands your schedule. Maybe someone that like is a night nurse. You know what I mean? Maybe her mm -hmm. night, maybe it's the medical field. Maybe you catch yourself a doctor that works evening hours. It could be. <laughs> Would it that could be, be. Nice? My my eyes and my heart is definitely open. But that was one of the things that definitely was at first when I really wanted to pursue this hard and I started doing it part-time in Georgia was affecting it because I saw that this is long hours. And you know, it's, if you really want to do this and work on your craft, something's going to have to sacrifice. And it was my social life, my social life sacrifice. But I really wanted to be in this. And I love what I'm doing. I love connecting with people. And I love the smiles I'm bringing to people's faces. So yes. eventually, um, I'm an optimistic person. I do feel like it's going to come for sure. So now my, my mindset has definitely changed. But when I first started, it really was affecting me because it was like, man, nobody wants to go to Denny's every damn day. It's like, right. come on. <laughs> nobody wants to go to right. IHOP for breakfast dates all the time. Right. You know, so that's what it was. Um, we need to find you a breakfast lovers group or something. I'm saying. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> that's what I was thinking in my mindset too, for real. Yes. For real. I want to do this or that with you, Meredith. Okay? Oh, I love this. Yes. So, throw two things at you. You just decide on which one, okay? I love these. Okay. Woo. Here we go. Thanksgiving or Christmas? Oh, Christmas. Popeyes or KFC? Popeyes. That's my girl. Okay. I like <laughs> that. I like that. You in the South now. If you would say KFC, right. I would have had to come on now. <laughs> um, drive in or movie theater? Movie theater. Okay. MJ or LeBron? MJ all the way. Gotcha. Tom Brady or Peyton Manning? Brady. Okay. Baseball or softball? <gasps> softball. I met softball. like all my I, like I met it. all my friends there, all of them, you know. Let me guess. Were you were you, was your was your position a catcher? No, when I was a, when I was younger, yes. Mm. But college, I was first base. That was my next thought. First base, my third one was going to be pitcher. But yes. I, could see I didn't it. have the attention pan, uh, attention span for pitching, but I could hit and I had a good gloves. And I was always taller than all the other girls, so first. I like that. Okay, yeah. all right. All right. <laughs> Football or basketball? Football. Okay. Uh, Utah or Florida? <gasps> Florida. <laughs> you was very decisive on that one i like that i like that. yeah yeah okay we got three more okay it has to do with chicken wing flavors barbecue yes. or lemon pepper barbecue dry or wet dry bone in or bone lip bone in drumsticks only boom wow. okay i like that okay hmm. breaking a part in between the bone of the wing part. I like the drumsticks though. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what? I'm I'm a boning guy too, but I'd rather do boneless as well. I'd rather uh, do boneless. Oh, bone, I like boneless. The meat. Give me yep. the meat. Uh, you and you don't have to get all. And then you can have them wet with any sauces when they're boneless. I feel hey, you know man. what? I should try. I should order boneless next time. Please do. I might have to switch. Might have to convert. I'm telling you, you'll change your life. It will. <laughs> you know? uh, we got two more of these. Okay. Now, wacky sports. Okay. Uh -huh. Badminton or bowling? Which one are you playing? Bowling. Are you a good bowler? I just bowled two weekends ago, and it had been years since that, and I did pretty good. Okay. All right. But I only had like I think I was like at one one twenty, but I broke a hundred, so. Ooh. That's pretty good. That is yeah. for taking two years off. That's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. All right. This has to do. Last one has to do with music. Okay. Mm hmm. So since you it. like rap, it's yes. two rappers Jay Z or Eminem. Eminem. Gotcha. Don't hate me, Mr. Carter. I, um, <laughs> I have mad respect for Jay Z. Okay. But man, Eminem hit hard when I was like a junior, senior in high school. So it, it. it, you know how something hits at that important time in your life between like junior high school and sophomore of college? 
Yeah. That's like the theme song for like the tr soundtrack for your life, I feel like. And Eminem was so big and so hot at that time. Eminem. But man, that's hard because Jay Z. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah, that's hard. I know it. I know it. Eminem. 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 Yeah. I feel it. I like that. I like that. You were decisive on that. How good are you at trivia? At Braves trivia? Um, I think it'll depend on what era, but hit me. We'll try it. Okay, so I got four questions here, okay. and I don't think they're too hard, especially the first one, but they do get harder as we go, okay? Okay. Here we go. First question, name the two years the Braves won the World Series. Okay, so that would be uh, 2021 that just happened and 1995. Correct. Absolutely. Boom. Absolutely. We starting off good. Okay. They get harder, but they do. They do get harder. The second question is name the highest number of division titles the Braves won in a row. Division. Okay, so I know there was a little stretch where we just kept getting beat right at the end. I'm gonna say three. Uh oh. Well, you, in a row. You way off. You way, way off. off. Way okay. Off. Twelve. That was closer, but the answer is 14. 14, 14 divisions. 14 division titles in a row. If you remember from, I believe, 1990 to like 2003, they won yeah. division titles all consecutive. Yeah. That, and those, this is why I'm very upset with myself right now. Those are my years. Chipper Jones, Maddox, Glavin, Schmoll. I mean, like, this is my jam. How did I not know that stat? God, you know, well, it's okay. Hey, thank you. You are brilliant in a lot of different ways. But sometimes thank you we for, can be slow. Thank you for schooling me on that. Jeez, I, appreciate that. I appreciate that. The next question is before Northport, what was the Braves spring training game set? Or where was the Braves spring training game set? Sure. That was at the Disney Wide World of Sports Complex in Orlando. That's right. That's right. Lake Buena Vista is what okay. they call it. Yes, absolutely. But you are absolutely correct. It was there. It was there. Now, this is the last one. What team beat the Atlanta Braves in the 92 World Series? Yankees. Nope. 92 World 90, Series. 92, 92. God, I don't know. I'll give you one hint. They went on to become back-to-back -back World Series champs. And it wasn't the Yankees. Oh my God, I don't know. Um, God, I don't know. I can't That's answer. Okay. That's all right. It was the Toronto Blue Jays. Oh. In 92 and in 93, they beat the uh, Philadelphia Phillies to win the World Series. Stinking Blue Jays. That's okay. That's all, all right. right. That was a, that was a, that's a great question. God. You did good though. Two or four. I like that. I really do. Um, these next. Two questions are top four questions, okay? Okay. So the top four question I want to have is first for you. What is top four events or things that you would like to do in your career or that you already have done in your career? Okay, top four things. Um, like any of my careers? Yeah. Like, okay, all right. So uh, national tournament with the softball team, we did. Okay. Um, I would say syndication with our show. I think I think we should be in more cities, making more people smile. Okay. Um, I would like to go to a Super Bowl. I've never been to a Super Bowl, mm. and um, to be honest, I would love to see be in be at a Braves game. Even though I'm not the fan host for the regular season, I would like to be at a Braves game for a World Series game. I didn't get to go to any games in Atlanta. You know, I'm only mm -hmm. the spring training host. So, yeah. but those would be my four things career related that that would be big goals for me. Yeah, you know, uh, two of those things really surprised me uh, because one, you know, Tampa obviously a couple of years ago just had the Super Bowl. I know. Uh, in Florida, I was like, man, I, I, was, I would have thought you would have went to that. And then obviously- I know with the Braves, you working for the Braves uh, at the spring training, I would think that maybe they would probably would possibly, but obviously they didn't. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, went to game four at the Battery last year for the World Series. Um, it was absolutely insane. 
a lot of people there uh and it was rocking it was rocking. that is awesome i hear everybody raves about the battery during big big series especially i mean any of them even regular season when big teams are in town they just rave about it i have to experience that i'm so excited for you yeah wow. absolutely. it was great that was absolutely great and uh you know i love going to big time events I, obviously i couldn't get into the game but i did go to the championship series when the dodgers were there a oh, friend of wow. mine that lived at the battery had a ticket uh and he had a, he got extra tickets because his roommate is a brave season ticket holder so he was oh. able to get an extra ticket for me so i was like cool so we went to the championship game but we went to the battery and watched the board uh outside and we were just chilling with a whole bunch of people having a good time um and already here in minnesota i've been here six weeks and i'm going to be going to the women's final four championship game so wow <laughs> good for you yeah, oh absolutely. my goodness okay that's awesome i there's a funny thing about going to big games at the stadium I miss hearing the TV announcers because they tell you all these cool things you don't know when you're at the stadium. So it's kind of like, do I want to be at the stadium to get the vibe, but at a bar or at the battery to see the game and hear what's going on? Or do right. I want to be inside? I think obviously inside you, you can't replace seeing it, but I do miss those announcers when I'm in a game, at a game, you know? So I totally understand that. I do. I well, really have do. fun at the final four. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice. Um, I'm, it's my first time ever being in like a Target Center that I would be up going to the Target Center like that. As a sports reporter, I might have a chance to go to state this year in the Williams Arena and cover high school state finals. A team, we'll see, because I actually have a game that I'm doing later today. Oh wow! Covering. So we'll see if the team wins or not. But yeah, absolutely, I'm definitely gonna have some fun because. You know, yeah. I got to bring some fun to Marshall, Minnesota. But like I said, there's not a whole lot here. So That's we got to right. make sure we got to turn up whenever we can and That's do what right. we love. So, do you have a um, media pass for the Final Four or you just have a ticket? Like, are you going in a I'm going as a patron. I'm going as a patron. But I, I'll be going as media covering the state high school board. Perfect. I, be, I do have my media pass for that. But, yes. Oh. Um, next top four question that I have is about where you're at. Now, Emily gave me some great answers. Because she's also in Sarasota, Florida. So I'm going to yeah. compare the two compare the two answers that you okay. give me. Now, there is a top four, because uh, I've never been to the state of Florida. Never have. Wow. Yeah. All and that I've been time in, in Georgia. I've been in Georgia for 11 years prior to me coming to Minnesota. Yeah, I've never been to the state wow. of Florida. Okay. Um, and I really want to go to Sarasota because I heard it's very beachy. Uh, it's probably it's not a whole lot to do there that I've heard, but it's just some pretty cool stuff. I want you to give me a top four of okay. things to do in Sarasota when I touch that. Okay, you absolutely have to hit Siesta Key, the beach, because mm. it's the number one beach in the world, like every other list that comes out, right? Yep. So you have to see that. Attached to that is uh, Siesta Key Village. So that I would say is our nightlife. There's some bars and clubs that play dance music. Like that's where you would go if you wanted to be out at night. Mm -hmm. um, Sarasota has amazing arts. So whether you like plays, concerts, museums, all the circus, I mean, this is like the home of Ringling Brothers Circus. So there's all this cool circus history stuff. So if you wanted to get a little culture, that would be the place for that. Okay. The third is, ooh, do you like golf? Do you like Tiger Woods and stuff I like that? I love it, I love okay. it. So we are getting the first or second Tiger Woods pop stroke. It's about to open this month. Um, so the UTC mall area has all these restaurants and shopping, and then it's going to have pop stroke, which is Tiger's uh, outdoor putting. It's like a, have you heard of this thing? No. Is it like top golf? It's okay. So top golf is driving and hitting long ball. Pop stroke is chipping and putting and it's 18 holes, but it has a bar and an outside and a restaurant. So that's opening oh. later this month. So okay. there's always stuff to do at UTC. And then the fourth and final thing would be right over the bridge in St. Pete, you could catch a Rays game, depending mm -hmm. on what time of year and hit a Bucks game like St. Pete, Tampa. I would hit one of those two professional sports teams, depending on what time of year. That is amazing because your aunt, you you and Emily said two things that were similar, and one was the baseball, 
Okay. And he said catch a uh, Braves spring training game if you can. And sure. she, also, she also said the Rays too. And then she also talked about the beach. Yeah, Siesta Key. Key. It is like if you put flour in your hands, that's the sand. It's not even like <laughs> there's some parts that are sugary, which is more crystally, but most of it is like flour. It's just gorgeous. So I gotta hit that. that up. And if you come down, you better let both of us know. So I we will, can take you to the right restaurants or so, something. So that so I told M, I call it M now. So I told M. I was like, I'm definitely gonna have to hit you up when I come down. I said, I don't care about even being a fifth wheel, sixth wheel. I get it <laughs> because it's probably gonna happen. I just want y'all to show me some great spots. So, yep. and she was like, no doubt, me and Meredith will definitely hook you up. I said, cool. For right. sure. I'm with that. Done deal. I'm, done deal. I definitely will. And def, trust me, I, that is on the bucket list because, like I said, I've never been to Florida ever. And one of the reasons why is because there's so many great cities. I don't know which one to visit first. I know. <laughs> so, and the crazy thing about Florida is up in the panhandle, it's super country, right? And then it just get like, then you get all the way down to Miami, which is, there's like little Cuba, little Haiti. There's like, I mean, it's like you, whatever you're wanting, then there's Disney in the center. It is the biggest garbage disposal slash melting pot of anything you could ever want. Um, right. So yeah, if you do come to Tampa, Sarasota, please hit hit me up hit emily up we'll at least do drinks or dinner or something absolutely that sounds like playing to me it's no question um i got two more questions for you this next okay. question has to do with challenges okay. um now obviously we've talked about uh you being in the industry you coaching uh, you being in sales uh you, you opened your heart about the counseling that you had mm -hmm. to do online counseling but what kind of challenges what other challenges have you faced being in this industry of uh, media and sports radio. Maybe it's with the schedule, uh, waking sure. up early in the morning. Maybe it's the location of where you had to go and live. Maybe it's being a woman, gender-wise. Right. Yeah. Sometimes, unfortunately, women get treated a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, what has been a challenge for you? Sure, so I would say in sports, I was lucky to have a an athletic director that was pro-female sports, but there's still a systemic issue i believe in sports whether it's college professional it's just been it's been male dominated for so long i mean anything i mean you give someone a 30 year head start in anything they're going you know what i'm saying anything yeah, I feel it. so so for me i feel like there are some ceilings you have to break through radio in general is a very is is a male dominated field but I'm blessed to have a co-host that lifts me up, never makes me the giggle girl, never knocks me down and is so like supportive of doing things. But I do feel like in radio, even I can't name one female, female co-host of a show. It's always male, female or right. male or female. Right. So right. I, I feel like there are some challenges there breaking through as a female um, on non soccer mom stations. You know what I mean? Like, I uh, so there's that. Um, but challenges, I think for me is being my biggest hater, my biggest critic, my biggest, you know, especially putting yourself out there in the media and on social, people forget that you're a human being. And I feel like hmm. the comments they drop, the things they say, you've put on weight, Oh, she should do something with that hair. Da, 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 da. And I'm not even on TV. You know right, what I mean? Right. So I feel like some of the challenges out there are the uh, keyboard uh, cowards that would say something online that they right. would never say in front of their grandmother or to my face. Oh, yeah. And I can't imagine. And Emily is obviously gorgeous, but I'm sure people have said some things because when you're on TV, you're expected to be on point every time there. Yep. I saw comments the other day about some lady's dress as an anchor. I'm like, did she deliver the news? <laughs> did she <laughs> make you laugh on the, did I make you right. laugh on the radio this morning? Right. Then I'm doing my job. If I'm in a sweatshirt or if I'm a little heavier than I was at this time last year, did I do my job right. on the radio? Did mm -hmm. I? 
And I feel like that's a challenge for so many people personally, but for professionally, when you put yourself out there, when yeah. you post your blogs or when you post your articles, yep. somebody's going to have something to say. Yep. And I try hard to keep out of the comments, but part of our job is to respond and engage with listeners. So how do you do that without coming across some of those landmines? I think for me personally, having alligator hide is very hard for me because I am sensitive. I'm getting better, especially now that I turned 40. I'm getting better. 40? Oh boy. What? Yeah, I, turn, I, I will be 41 on April 10th. I, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I, I, no, to be honest with you, I, I really thought that I would have said, to be honest, the oldest 34, 35. Really? Yeah, I would have. Uh, yeah, you, you, you definitely look mature, but at the same time, you don't you don't look poor. But it's incredible. Thank 40 looks great. <laughs> I have to say. And I'm trying to embrace it. Yeah, please do. That's awesome. That's Thank what's up. I love that. Um, what are some challenges that you're finding in your field? Is there anything you're facing? Oh, the same. Uh, the trolls, right? Um, you know, people always having to I think the main thing for me is the, the trolls, but also people thinking that they always can make what you do better. Oh, right? I could do like, that. It's, it's like um, it's like the parents when they come up to the coach and they want to talk about their kid and what they should do in the game and or what they got to play or they how they should play or how they should coach. Well, it's, it's like people outside when I write articles or when I do podcasts or when I do videos and I may do Instagram videos as well. Oh, well, man, you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't say that. Always a critique, right? Which, Always. You know, it's okay to have constructive criticism. I'm cool with that. But when you have people that always seem to want to critique your stuff, but then they don't want to do it to themselves, it's like, well, what, what, what are we talking about here? Like, why are you critiquing my stuff? Why don't you do that? Oh, well, you know, I'm just saying because you do it. Okay, well, don't say it. I'll keep it to you. Let me tell you. And what is it about us sports fans that make us psychotic online? Like we are mean as hell, especially yeah. I always feel bad for the college athletes too. They're 18, 19 year old kids. Yeah, and people forget that because they play at a big school and right. they're trashing. I mean, I don't know how this generation does it. Seeing that criticism in their face the way back in the day you had to have someone yell it out in the stands or something for you to hear that. But I feel that for you. And yeah, there is a, a Netflix documentary by a woman named Brene Brown. And she talks about what you're talking about. She talks about trolls online. You're down in the gladiator ring, doing the hard work, putting yourself out there, making content, writing, creating mm -hmm. art. Yeah. And some jack ass up in the high nosebleeds is throwing crap down at you right he's not even in the ring right. you can't talk to me until you get in the ring right exactly. and that that changed my life when i heard that on her netflix special and that's what i always try to remember just remember chris you're writing you're following your dreams you're doing the damn thing they have the time to sit around and critique and that's their creation is their little right. comment they haven't right. created anything mm -hmm. it's usually from a fake account too they don't even have the balls to have their real name. Come on. That, I'm, I'm with you on that. And like you said, it's just it's not even in the ring. And they just want attention. And that's fine. It's fine that you want attention like that. And that's for me personally, I'm just like, listen, I'm so laser focused in like probably yourself. Like I'm not even hearing that white noise because I'm doing what I love to do. Find your past. Do what you do. And I appreciate you reading my stuff. So, hey, keep on reading and keep on commenting because for every, right. for every silly ass comment that I read, I'm going to have 20, 30 other comments that's not going to be silly. It's going to be good. That's it's going right. to be positive. And that's what you know. And it cracked me up before, before I got into this profession that, you know, you look at public figures and you, you get all the adulation and all the love. But they take that one or two comments that was bad and then they respond to it. And I'm like, you know what? I want to be the complete opposite. I want to be like, Okay, I'll. I don't want to give this person noise, white noise. You know what I mean? Because eventually that white noise will die out. And for me, I'm gonna keep doing what I love to do. I'm gonna wake up with a smile. But that is the challenge when you are in the media, when you are on a radio show, when you are. Because I'll go to events, Meredith. And mind you, before I get to this last question, I'll tell you this: I moved here 
and it was 3% black people living there. Wow. It was 92% white. And that's not a problem for me because I've never seen color, I've seen people. That's how my mother and my father talk. So I went to the game and this guy came up to me. It was probably my second week here. And he said, hey, how you doing? I said, sir, I'm doing good. How are you? And he said, oh, I'm doing well. I didn't know uh, that they hired a new black reporter at the Marshall Independent. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, yep, yeah, I've been here a couple of weeks. And he was like, yeah. Um, he said, I didn't know. I, I didn't know that they would hire somebody at the Marshall Independent. I was like, well, they, they did, sir. And I'm here, and I'm new, and I'm covering games. And you're going to have to get used to me because I'm going to be writing a whole lot more and covering a lot more. And I said, love that you're not a reporter either. You're a black reporter. Right. You know what I mean? I didn't know. Oh, great. They hired a new reporter. No, no, they hired a black reporter. Exactly. Is that different? Exactly. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. if you read my article, you wouldn't know from Chris Drummond. Exactly. You saw me and now it's, oh, I didn't know they would hire a black reporter. Exactly. It's and so that, that was the first mindset. That was the first thought in my mind. And the second thought in my mind was how bold he was to walk up to me and say that. Um, and I was like, wow, okay. And listen, my editor-in-chief, he told me, hey, you may get some people like that here. They're everywhere. That's cool. Sure. But that's not going to shake me. It didn't right. surprise me. I, I mean, it was one of those things where, okay, you know ignorance is going to be around, but yep. let me just keep writing. And then all of a sudden, like I said, the adulation will come. And now people is like, well, it's not the new black reporter. It's the, the new reporter at Marshall that's doing wonderful things. It's writing about stories. Thank you. And I'm getting thank yous now four weeks after that. So you just have to change people's minds with the hard work and the work ethic. And you will do that. And that's right. people, people look at you different. And I think if there's anyone to send into a 3% um, community, it is someone like you, because I know I don't know you deeply yet, but yeah. from what I have read, seen and watched and now experienced for the last, however long we've been talking, yeah. you are friendly, you are educated, you are yeah. interested and you care about people. And Absolutely. if anyone is gonna be able to go in there and win over people that maybe just, it's not that maybe they aren't, racist or have hateful feelings they just right. aren't used to the exposure they just right. are like to them it's like oh my god i've never been around a black person i don't know i don't know any of the culture things i don't know any any of that so if anyone is a i think you're the best representative to go into there and maybe be that first black person they've ever met or respected or read you know so absolutely i appreciate I wish you the best that, of luck on that man Thank our, our nation seems to take big leaps and then take 10 steps backwards and then we take a leap and just when you think things are better it's like we go back yeah. again it's like my god it is uh, no doubt i appreciate you saying that meredith i really do uh um, yeah. it's just one of those things where you know the unknown is a scary thing right when you when you when you're not around a lot of you know minorities yes you know stuff like that you don't know how to be around it so it's unknown to you and it's okay. It's okay to be unknown. But if you're open, your heart is open and you're willing to learn, then that's a beautiful thing. So, yeah. uh, and, and that, that's a, a great segue because okay. I love, I, I want to talk about your show, the 107.9. Okay. Yeah. And the reason why it's a great segue is because I want to know what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Sure. Uh, obviously, you come on Monday through Friday, 6 to 10. So, you know, if people were to watch this episode and learn a lot about you, which they will, and learn how lovely you are in a plethora of ways, what, how, how do you break down a radio show for four hours? What do you do? Sure. Okay, so I come in about five o'clock for the six o'clock show. Okay. David and I will text each other things if we see it on the news the night before, or maybe I'll email myself a link of something I saw funny on, on social. So we're prepping, always prepping. Okay. And David has really taught me a lot about seeing things in your life that you can incorporate in the show. Sometimes okay. I, I compartmentalize, but I come in an hour before we prep, we get ready for whatever our giveaways are. We read through all of the headlines. We hit um, first thing we hit are two local papers, uh, ABC seven. We look at local, then we go to national uh, sites and really try to see what is something that we can make funny without being mean 
Um, right. We don't do politics and we don't do like murders. We don't do heavy stuff. We're okay. light. So we like to pick on pick things that our listeners would be like, oh my God, you know, this is happening. So we come up with those ideas. And then um, the first hour, we talk a lot about our days and we're warming up because people are just getting up too. And Absolutely. they don't want to be hit in the head with, you know, something, Absolutely. you know, something too heavy. So we do a lot of personal stuff in the six o'clock hour, seven o'clock hour. We have one of our first um contests which is uh, called the joko game show so that changes some days it's like a jeopardy theme some days it's um fill in the blank we we do rotating games in there uh, mm -hmm. but it's always story story um funny story story funny i do one good news story every day sometimes okay. that falls in the seven sometimes that falls in the eight o'clock um the eight o'clock hour is hopefully we've had a topic that got some phone calls some texting some social engagement right. and then we will engage with people during the eight o'clock hour then mm -hmm. we hit them with name that tune which is a fun game there's always a prize we play a snippet at the beginning of a song and they try to guess what it is nine o'clock hour is um things that went really well earlier or by then a lot more of the articles have started to come out from news people like yourself you know mm -hmm. maybe first thing in the morning they got up to finish whatever they did yeah hit them with something fresh and um, it's a little bit more music heavy in the nine o'clock so our show is not all talk it's music music talk music talk music okay. music talk. So it goes back and forth mm -hmm. um but we just really try to stress that we don't you can get bad news anytime you want hit your phone i have alerts all day long that hit my phone i'm like oh wow a bomb in this yeah. city oh wow a school shooting it's like oh my god so for us if somebody's listening to us we want to keep it light you know uh we do a lot of parody songs goofy stuff goofy goofy i love it i love <laughs> so it so that's that's kind of the structure a little bit of music uh talk and then we do play a lot of games we like to give prizes away so we give we give at least two prizes away every day so Ooh, i like that i like that structure because you know obviously you don't want to be talking all four hours you don't want to be listening to music all four hours i like the fact you uh throw game ideas in there and prizes and also uh do you ever have guests yes we do so before the pandemic every friday we had the comedian that came to our comedy club locally mccurdy's comedy theater has been here okay. for over 30 years he gets big names like we've met some major people on okay. the show so every friday we pop champagne oh siri siri thought i was talking to him every friday we pop champagne and then we have the comedian in on tuesdays we help an animal get adopted so the humane society wow. comes by every tuesday we have a company critter because it's jones and company and we feature them from the sarasota humane society of sarasota county um and then we don't do a lot of guests like uh the mayor or the police chief we don't do a lot of that because sometimes it can be hard to make that super compelling and light right so right. we're pretty choosy on who comes in but okay. if something crazy like we get a lot of people on like america's got talent we get a lot of people from this area because of the circus and performing and stuff so if somebody goes viral we'll reach out to them here too so that's kind I of like that. uh, and then oh. in your spare time social 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 build a website blog you know we have to constantly be doing that too and david and i are alone we don't have a producer anymore unfortunately we yeah. used to and we loved him so all of that producer type task stuff falls on us in the middle of creating hold on i gotta blow my nose uh i have allergies so bad down here do you have uh, pollen up in minnesota or is it too cold for all that uh it's very cold for all that <laughs> it is very cold yes indeed no doubt um but no that's totally awesome uh i would love to obviously when i'm there in sarasota i would love to like sit in on the show that'd be awesome well you're a little different you would be media and i've been on your podcast with you which by the way i've never really been asked or able to do a podcast so thank you so much for being my uh for even wanting to talk to me that's pretty Absolutely. awesome it I was think a no brainer no brainer at all you know you're in the media you talk you do it day to day you do the braids uh and like i said this is a podcast of finding out your why of why you got into it but also getting to know you beyond your occupation i love talking to different people in different genres 
uh, but also sports because it's just a great way to connect with people, but it's also a great way to learn about what you do. Somebody may look at this and say, well, I want to do what Meredith does. Or I want to yeah. do something similar. Or maybe I have, uh, maybe I want to talk to her too, but I have different questions. Yes. Right, so yeah. it's just a way for me to do that, and that's why I opened up this platform. Um, Perfect. Well, and yeah. on that note, when when you come to town, you we absolutely would schedule you to come in. Um, I would love for you to experience some of what we do here. And um, if Thank anybody you. that ends up hearing this or seeing this wants to reach out and ask questions about the industry, be it sports or radio, please share whatever contact information. Um, that you see fit and I would, I have no problem. I would love to talk to the next generation or maybe someone even like on my same level. I would love Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Well, I'm gonna get you out of here, Meredith, on advice. What okay. advice would you give someone or someone has allocated to you yeah. about being in this profession uh, that you hold on dearly to? Okay. Never stop. No's, no's are going to come your way. And when you get a lot of no's, you know, you're on to something. And it just takes that one person to say, mm -hmm. that's it. Boom. We just talked to Richard Marks today, um, a famous singer from the yeah. 80s and 90s. And he yeah. said, all he got was no's. That's what he said to us. All I got was no's. And then boom, Lionel Richie said, come out to LA. And he came out to LA and that's how it all started. And now he did stuff, you know, Barbara Streisand. Now his circle of people is like all the famous, famous, but he was told no constantly. And I, I think you just, got, if you love, if you truly believe in what you're doing, you've got to keep going no matter how many doors are slammed in your face, because guess what? That one wasn't meant for you right. and the right one's coming. So I like that. I like that. Now who get, did someone give you that advice or is that advice from you? I think it's a little bit of everything. Okay. But I also think some of it, it comes from being raised in faith, being raised faith-based where you have to believe because so many people can say what you believe in isn't real, but I still believe. Do you know what I mean? So you just have Absolutely. to kind of have that conviction where this is what I want to do. I'm going to do it no matter who tells me I'm wrong or stupid or it's dumb or it's not going to work. So find that passion and just live your life with conviction because for every person that doesn't like it there's someone that loves it i love that advice i really do and you're absolutely right there is going to be a bunch of no's uh that come your way but if you stay passionate stay grounded and uh keep being persistent you will, all you need is one yes yep. and that's for sure um, and especially if you belong in any minority category of any kind you're going to get the no's um <laughs> So whether it's female, whether it's creed, whether it's race, you're going to get no's and don't just keep plowing because the yes is coming and it's going to be beautiful. I love it. I love it. I am following you on Instagram. Yes. Uh, I am, if you have a Twitter, I'll follow you there as well. Uh, I believe I tried to link up with you on LinkedIn as well. Oh, um, did you? I haven't I checked did. my LinkedIn in forever. I'm so sorry. I'll have to you, go you get should. it. You're good. Uh, if you want to follow me back, you certainly can. Uh, yeah. I believe this has been an awesome conversation between you and I, between two people in the media who are passionate about what they do and absolutely excel in what we're doing right now. And I'm a new fan of yours. Oh. I'm, a, I'm definitely going to have to listen in to the show. Uh, I hope you kill it out there uh, in Northport uh, with the Braves spring training. Um, and like I said, I felt like I learned a lot about you. Uh, I really thank you for coming on, as I always do, to end my podcast. I ask, is there anything else you'd like to add before we conclude? Um, not personally, other than a thank you to you. I love that you're out here doing it, that you're in the ring and that you're doing what you want to do. And I think that's amazing. And I too am a new fan of yours. I did follow you the other day back on Instagram. So hopefully I'll, I'm a spastic Twitter person. I won't say anything for a year and then I'll do 42 <laughs> tweets in a day. It's like all of a sudden I'll be waiting for the, like a dentist appointment or something. And I'm like tweeting my life and then I don't right. touch it for another year. Right. So I'm on there, but it's not like my favorite Instagram's where I'm most active, but I will follow you on everything. And I wish you nothing but the best. Definitely, definitely, Meredith. And like I said, when I touch down, I will hit you up. You enjoy the rest of your Thursday and your weekend. And thank you so much once again. 
You too. Thank you. No Bye. Bye.